go, go! A lot can be done with shields when they react in the way that you would expect. Today, we're going to look at how Star Citizen's new shield system aims to provide more accurate feedback, dynamic protection, and some juicy visuals. I'm Space Tomato, and this is your ISC Weekly Review. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. And thanks to my newest YouTube member, Kevin Lytle. Before we get into shields, let's talk about the rest of the episode first, a focus on the ships introducing these shields, those being the Javelin and the Idris. The two largest player-ownable ships in the game. No longer just JPEGs, huh? Actually, I think they were mostly PNGs, but now they're in-game fighting players and delivering combat scenarios in different forms based on their strengths. The Idris, as a small patrol boat with a hangar capable of carrying a few fighters, will aim to defend itself from missiles, take out ships with its turrets, and go for the largest target with its massive bespoke railgun. The Javelin, on the other hand, will do the same, but will focus on keeping its broadside towards the enemy as a large destroyer with some equally large turrets scattered across the surface. Both of these ships will not only take dozens of crew to officially man them when players are able to fly their own in the game, but will also take multiple players and quite a bit of firepower to take out. Now the current state of their combat capabilities are, in Star Citizen fashion, still under development and always changing to better accommodate what is needed of them, and the AI itself is still being created, but they still pose a pretty significant threat to anybody nearby. And with the new ability to shoot down missiles and torpedoes headed for them, they aren't as easy as before. These ships have been brought into the game for a new live event being introduced to players. The player base will be required to push back against the new threat entering the star system from nearby. The conflict brings fighters, bombers, and traders to a focused location that is sure to spawn plenty of PvE and PvP which will most likely result in some great videos and amazing stories to carry with you going forward. Now while this event might not be amazing and incredible for everybody, it's more about what it represents going forward with dynamic events and other things like it. Regardless, it seems like a great event to join with your org. Hmm, maybe the Garden Discord server should think about putting something together. The fact that this is a playtest, in my opinion, just makes it better. One strength of this model Star Citizen has taken is that everything that they do has thousands upon thousands of gamers looking for the perfect space sim experience. So even though the game is being designed to fit Chris Roberts' dream, we sure do get to help fine tune things in some situations. And the developers like to try and take what we say to improve the game. It's not something I've ever been able to be a part of in some of my other favorite games. I'm really enjoying the effects and the overall vibes we're getting from these space battles lately. The explosions, the lasers, the gas clouds, even this subtle inertial reaction to a torpedo hitting the side of this massive ship. It's the little things. But then you see a scene like this and you realize it's the big things too. Sign distance fields have been used throughout the game for many different things. Since as early as 2017, we've known that the shield system would use the technology. But due to other priorities and dependencies, and perhaps overzealous estimates, we've had to wait four years for it to finally be implemented into the game. For many people, this reality means the downfall of the game. These features take too long, thus the game takes too long, thus the game will never be finished, so to speak. While this is possible, funding continues to grow every year, 
these features that we've been watching get kicked back again and again are beginning to be implemented, and the game is becoming more playable and enjoyable with each patch. Now while this implementation of shields doesn't cover every ship in the game, it is the introduction of the new technology application that we've been hearing soon about for as long as many can remember. And whenever one of these unicorns actually makes it into the game, I think it deserves saying that these things do eventually happen many times. The technology itself makes for some incredible effects, some of which are actually informative. Now, shields will heat up, in a sense, as they take more damage in a specific place, changing color and texture until they eventually pop to reveal the armor underneath. And you may notice while watching these clips that some of the shots actually get through the shields at times. This is because certain weapons and weapon types have a higher chance of passing through the shields and damaging the hull, while other types are meant to damage the shields more effectively, much like how ballistics and plasma weapons work in Halo. This means you'll need to consider additional strategy when going up against your opponents. And with these new shields, you'll have an easier time understanding what you're actually doing to said opponent, and at what point you need to concentrate your fire. Because what's the point of having a team if you're all shooting at different places? Because of this, shields are no longer just visual representations, but offer more gameplay-focused feedback to the players, improving the combat experience in battles such as these. The shield tech at its base allows a mesh of structure to surround the shapes based on the various vertices of those shapes, rather than a general bubble shield. This is the same thing that allows for each ship to have different aerodynamic profiles, or even the pretty atmospheric effects that you get when the ships are entering a planetary body. Now, this is the initial release of this shield technology, which, while a nice upgrade from the previous versions, is not fully representative of the functionality that is desired from the future. Powering on and off states will be needed, creating variety through the specific types of shields based on manufacturer or even race, and obviously bringing the technology to every ship in the game and not just these capital ships will all be additional steps in the long running road to an enjoyable game. Don't expect all of that to happen soon, but remember that development and features like these will continue to progress for years to come, even past a formal release. While these shield effects aren't in the game for our sh while these shield effects aren't in the game for our ships, like I said, it's really nice to see them functional in-game in some way. Who else remembers hearing about this technology all those years ago? And while this event isn't that interesting to many people, I don't think anybody can ignore the potential that these events hint at in the future to come. Check out my recent video if you'd like to hear more about what I think of the feature. And if you'd like a place where you can discuss more of these features or learn more about the game, join our Discord gaming community. And if you want to get more ships, join my giveaways hosted both here or on Twitch, both in the video description. And make sure to keep an eye out for my special code throughout these videos that will give you a better chance at winning these ships. And I may possibly be giving away a Toby 5 eye tracker, so make sure to check that out as well. I appreciate all the support you guys have offered during this time and can't wait to be back in a more stable situation where I can continue to raise the quality of this content. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around until then and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, The Alpaca, The Huntress, Ben N, Dasek, Holston Coop, and Guilty Conscience.